Now I also would like to show you how to debug and troubleshoot these Tecton resources because from experience, especially if you're just starting out, a lot of lot of things can go wrong. And at least we would like to know where to look at. So what is helpful already is what I showed you with these dashboards that we could um, check out the Tecton and the Argo dashboard that comes with this installation here. And as we saw before, we have a few uh, ways how to do um, how to check out some logs, for example, with these pipeline runs and task runs and so on and so forth. But what is quite helpful already is just to know that all of these things are actually Kubernetes resources. So what helps is if we just check out our cluster and especially the pods that are available here. So not in a default namespace, but in the appropriate namespace. So I explained that we have this Tecton pipelines available. And then we can see that actually we have a few Tecton resources that are just running and also these tasks that actually or task runs that run as Kubernetes pods. So if anything goes wrong here, so for example, if a task uh, could not even be executed or a task run could not be scheduled, then we would see it here as Kubernetes resources already. So for example, if a, ta if a pod could not be scheduled, we would see why that is the case or if an image could not be pulled and so on and so forth. So you can use the kube control commands such as kube control get pods or kube control describe to describe these Kubernetes resources to see what's going on. What we just saw with the GitHub example or actually with the event listeners is that we can create such event listeners where we then have a Kubernetes service available for the um, listener here. And of course, we also have a pod available what we just saw before. So actually, if I would like to see why my pipeline has not been triggered after I pushed to my repository, I could check this out by just looking at the logs of this trigger. So for example, to see Kubernetes logs for this namespace and then for the event listener here, then it will just show me all kinds of logs, which actually will be printed once either we have a successful uh, trigger with a successful push event or even if something goes wrong. So for example, if the uh, secret has not been uh, provided successfully or some of the filter information does not match the expected um, filter criteria, then we would see it here. Similarly, we could use any other logs for the actual pods and containers that are parts of the uh, task run. So we would see a similar output to this one where actually this is the output of the running container. And again, uh, we can see what's going on here. If some other Tecton resources could not be provided here, then the Tecton dashboard or of course the Tecton command line, um, which is available also shows um, us a lot of information. So for, for example, we could check out the tasks, why something uh, did not work. So um, sometimes it might be the case that some uh, parameters could not be bound correctly if we um, have, a, have an error in our YAML resources and things like that. So this is quite helpful. Also, the fact that we have everything as YAML available here is very helpful because then we can just um, make some changes here and also see which changes have been made if we uh, put it to version control. So that's quite helpful for debug purposes as well. Then for the individual workloads or actual individual steps that we run within our tasks and within our pipelines, what is also quite helpful is just to um, see well, if we would like to debug a specific task why something is failing. So instead of making some changes to a pipeline and committing that again, rolling it out via Argo and committing it again and, you know, make this uh, having this long turnaround times, what we can do instead is to set up an example task run where we can just debug things quite quickly. So what I have here that is part of my Argo CD example repository, which you actually can can check out um, here on the GitHub. In Tecton, I have a test task run, which is only there for debug purposes, which actually we can use to, well, provide the same information that would for some reason fail in our pipeline. So for example, if I specify the task run, and this is now only the execution of a specific task, not even a, a pipeline, we could still either reference a task or put the specification here in line. So for example, I can say, please have the same parameters um, like my GitHub URL or some workspaces that I can down here. 
define immediately within this task run, uh, test run. So this is just a test definition to see, please set this up in the same way like I would have the information in my pipeline and also provide the task specification immediately. For example, I say, please check out the repository uh, in that same way if that doesn't work. So for example, if the secrets do not work correctly that are part of my service account or anything else here, this would already fail and I could debug it. But in my case, I actually want to debug and show a second step. And what I do, I build up that Maven um, step in the same way like my proper task, but now not with the Maven command, but with a, a sleep infinity uh, command, which basically just halts and uh, lets the step, lets the container up and running, uh, still running. And I can then use Kubernetes mechanisms to check this out, to see what's uh, happening and to also connect to this running container. So this is somewhat similar to what you would do in a breakpoint um, execution. And if I would like to check this out and try it, well, what I could do is just to go to this, um, uh, to this repo and then create such a task run, which I will just do uh, right now. I go to this um, Argo CD example and I say, please keep control create this task run, which is under Tekton uh, testing and then it will create such a task run. Now, if I check out my dashboard, in this case, it actually is a task that will not finish just because it has the sleep uh, infinity. So I now can check out, well, the first step actually worked. So that's good news because in my case, assuming I would like to debug what's happening inside my repository. So now I check out the second step where, well, it's still running, it's just sleeping, but of course, now you know this is a running pod. So the pod is just here. It says, well, it's not ready because it's still well, waiting to uh, be in a ready state, but this won't happen because it's just sleeping. But it is a running container, so I can connect to it. I can actually say, well, please, um, a cube control exec execute something within that pod in my namespace. And what I would like to execute, well, I would like to execute something in my container which now is a container uh, that corresponds to the step. So it's called step dash build sources. And I would like to execute bin shell. So it is the same way like I would always do with Kubernetes resources. I say, please execute something within a pod and I can only execute something in a running container. So if I have multiple containers, I have to specify it. It's called step and then uh, the, build, uh, the step name. And I would like to execute um, this uh, bin bash or here bin uh, sh and then I'm actually connected to my container and I could execute some commands here. So we see that within this workspace I already checked out my git repository so now I could make some changes here and see well what's going on. So for example if my build fails for some uh, reasons because I misconfigured my YAML file here that then I could actually check out well what happens here if I invoke Maven you know with the version if it's uh, set up correctly or what happens if I do Maven package and if I have some other uh, problems some technical problems within my task and steps I can actually uh, check them out here and just see uh, what's going on and then change my definition later on. So this is actually very helpful just to see what is happening in my steps and to try it out and debug it in case it doesn't work out. So that is very helpful already and also for all of the other um, resources that are part of my application. I could, for example, check out uh, the Argo dashboard and see what is actually applied right now. So for the pipeline uh, repository or the production or system test uh, environment here, I can see if it's the latest uh, version here. I could refresh and just check for the latest pushes or something like that. And again, all of these are just Kubernetes resources. So if I would like to check out how my application uh, looks like for the production namespace or the system test namespace, I can of course always check this out using the cube control command line and see the actual resources here and how they should be uh, applied. 
And once everything has been tested and I, you know, tried out what now should work, I could commit these changes to my config, to my GitOps repository, and then just trigger Argo that it rolls them out. And for example, trigger my pipeline again. And by doing that, I just have a much faster turnaround in order to test things. And I don't always have to, you know, like push to my pipeline and wait until the whole pipeline ran. I have a few points where I can actually just look into what's happening at the Tecton and Argo resources much faster. So this was basically all um, uh, that I wanted to show you as part of this video course. My motivation was to show you how to set up an example pipeline using a sophisticated uh, example of a Java app that also comes with some system tests and you know like some more proper environments. And I hope it, would ha it was helpful for you to get started, especially with Tecton and Argo. And I hope it was interesting to watch. So thanks a lot for watching. Bye.